as you were describing going in and what you were feeling and they said fluid in your lungs. I mean, as you were saying it, it was all happening to me. I was sick. I like, I was, I think my fever was rising. I have a terrible headache all of a sudden. My lung, <laughs> you, you have like, as I you were saying you it, can't it, breathe. <laughs> it was happening to me as you were saying it, but, <laughs> um, but you said it really well early on. I'm 50. I am like, I'm 50. I'm healthy. If I get it, I'll beat it. All good. No big deal. What you say then all of a sudden scares me back into reality, which is everybody stay home. Stop with these freedom protests. Stop opening the beaches. I, I'm kind of torn. You tell me you've lived this. Should America be opening up? Should America stay closed? You've lived it, dude. Yeah, no. And, and it's a tough, it's a tough situation. I guess my point you is you have to look at the numbers and the data kind of drive those decisions. I don't. I would never make a decision whether we should keep an economy open or not and people lose their jobs or not based on me uh, ending up in the ICU because I'm probably still, if you look at the statistics, an outlier where the majority of people our age, the vast majority are not going to end up where I was. And so you have to keep everything in perspective. It was so scary and I don't wish it on anybody and I think we have to be safe. And by the way, I think it was the right thing it has been the right thing to shut things down and figure this thing out and get our arms around it and get the testing ramped up and really, you know, let these great doctors and scientists kind of figure out what this virus is doing and how is it working. Um, but at some point, uh, you have to go back to work. You have to open things back up. You have to get things going um, because we start, in my opinion, and this is why the numbers have to drive this decision, you know, you know, unemployment, shutting down the businesses, I mean, ruining people's lives in that manner versus what's happening with the coronavirus. You have to have these really smart economists, really smart healthcare people all sitting down and saying, what is the numbers telling us? Because what we've seen with the shutdown or the lockdown of people staying home, we have flattened the curve. We have not put such a burden on the healthcare uh, system that they have to make decisions of who dies and who lives based on who gets a ventilator. That's the last thing. I don't think we ever want to be in that situation. But even if you look at the curves and the data they give you, when you flatten the curve, that doesn't mean less people get it. It just it spreads it out over a period of time instead of this huge peak. Um, and so at some point, as you look at all this, we have to make a decision. Like, I'll say this. I live in Florida. We have done a great job, and they've done a great job of managing it. We've not had a big surge. We've not had these outbreaks. People have done stuff. Um, and they've started to slowly open things back up. We've had the beaches open in Jacksonville for over a week now. People have been smart about it. You know, I think you're slowly going to start things coming back. You see parts of the country in certain states where they've had no real impact. Why should those individuals have to stay home? I think you have to treat each location differently. New York has its own set of issues. So I think what we get caught in doing, Scott, is we want to make these black and white, do this or do that. And sometimes there's nuances that, you know, certain places we have to work our way back slower. We can go quicker in other places. And some places we need to stay on hold right now. Um, but what we have to do, you cannot let emotion or fear drive these decisions. Boy, Numbers really have well to drive fed. the decisions. The statistics have to, like the experts. Because if you just go by me, oh, stay home forever. You know, don't <laughs> sell you know, like, you can't do that. That's not right. And I would not say it with me being in the hospital and my family getting it. It's just not the, how you make decisions that are big, important, that affect an entire country. We're talking, this affects 382 million people. Right. And we it affects families and jobs and everything else. And we really got to keep that in mind, as well as the elderly, the, uh, the medically fragile uh, people who have underlying health conditions. We need to keep all that in mind as we make these big decisions. 